Today, we're delving into the realm of GTA 6 Online, the upcoming multiplayer aspect of Rockstar Games' Grand Theft Auto 6. We'll dissect all the insights gathered from leaks back in 2022, alongside an intriguing anti-cheat patent filed by Rockstar's parent company, Take-Two Interactive. This patent offers a glimpse into how the forthcoming online experience aims to ensure a safer environment compared to the current GTA Online. Furthermore, we'll explore a novel method Rockstar plans to implement in GTA 6 for managing online sessions. This innovation promises to infuse the expansive world of GTA 6 with a livelier atmosphere, enriching the player's immersion in its intricacies. Undoubtedly, GTA Online stands as a titan in the realm of multiplayer gaming. Its enduring popularity has significantly contributed to the ongoing success of GTA 5 over the past 11 years. This success owes much to Rockstar's astute strategy, crafting a robust core game with GTA 5 and then supplementing it with regular content updates for the online segment. By continually introducing new weapons, vehicles and attire, Rockstar keeps players engaged and motivated to accumulate in-game currency. As we eagerly anticipate the official unveiling of GTA 6, players are hopeful that it will address prevalent issues plaguing the current iteration. Chief among these concerns is the rampant presence of modders and cheaters, whose actions not only disrupt gameplay, but also pose security risks by unlawfully accessing personal data. To tackle this issue, Rockstar has devised a fresh approach set to debut in GTA 6. This method aims to bolster the game's security measures. The patent responsible for this enhancement is titled Method and Apparatus for Preventing Cheating in a Video Game Environment by Providing Obfuscated Game Variables. Filed by Take-Two Interactive, Rockstar's parent company, in 2019, this patent outlines a system and method aimed at curbing cheating within video game environments. By disguising game variables in memory, the patent seeks to thwart attempts by players to monitor and manipulate values such as health, ammunition, and in-game currency for unfair advantages. Traditionally, developers combat such exploits by encrypting, coding, or obfuscating the location of these values, alongside implementing integrity checks to detect unauthorized modifications. However, these methods have drawbacks, as they often impact game performance and inadvertently expose variable locations to savvy attackers. Rockstar's innovation lies in masking the whereabouts of these variables, offering a more robust defense against cheating in GTA 6's online. I won't delve into the technical intricacies, but essentially, Rockstar employs a clever and seemingly straightforward technique to conceal these values. This makes it considerably tougher for attackers to pinpoint their locations. While the concept of masking values may seem straightforward, its effectiveness in bolstering stability and enhancing security for the future online segment is paramount. Moving forward, let's turn our attention to the next patent, titled System and Method for Session Management in a Multiplayer Network Gaming Environment. Filed by T2 Interactive in 2021, this patent addresses Disclosed Our Systems and Methods for Session Management. The disclosed system allows for seamless merging and splitting of network sessions in a multiplayer network gaming environment. Seamless session management allows dynamic movement of players in a virtual world during gameplay without unnecessary loading and or stalling. As the players in the virtual world move around, the management of active game sessions can be improved to affect a more realistic perceived population. In this patent, Rockstar highlights the crucial role of online components in the success of many games, citing GTA Online as an example. They emphasize the challenges of managing network technology and resources to create a vibrant virtual world. Traditional MMO games often face limitations in session management, with some opting for single sessions that may restrict the depth of content due to increasing player counts. Others utilize multiple sessions, which can hinder feasibility, especially in peer-to-peer -peer exchanges like in GTA Online. To address these issues, Rockstar has developed a pioneering system for seamless session management. This innovative approach enables fluid splitting and merging of network sessions, allowing for a more immersive virtual world free from hardware and software constraints. Allowing players from different sessions, but in the same virtual area of the map, for example, to be merged into a single session. This allows players from previously different sessions to come across one another, thereby making the virtual world seem more populated. As an additional advantage, seamless session merging handles many network failures silently. In prior art systems, a player who loses network connectivity 
can be kicked out of a session and may not be able to rejoin because they are in a session by themselves. However, the Session Management System 100 allows for a disconnected player to exist in a session by themselves for a predetermined period before they are reconnected to the remaining players in the session or can be joined with another session. The method begins with monitoring a triggering event. In some embodiments, the triggering event defines when to merge two sessions or split a single session. For example, when the object, virtual players, are in the same session, move physically apart from another. The object by a predetermined virtual distance, this triggers the session management system to split the session into two different sessions. There's been a lot of talk since GTA 6 was announced, with rumors flying all over. But hey, here's a rundown of confirmed stuff like vehicles, items, weapons, and features for the game. Now, the official release of the game is still a good few years away. Rockstar Games is really putting in the work to make this game top notch. But thanks to a leak, we've got some inside info. We're talking cars, new physics, main characters like Lucia and Jason, map locations, a massive open world, tons of stuff to do in game, and a bunch of weapons you'll get to use. We've also learned about better AI for non-player characters, some RPG elements, and cool new gameplay features. All this has got the gaming community buzzing about what GTA 6 will bring when it finally drops. Let's dive into the primary video clips, making rounds on social platforms, showcasing mission gameplay, and offering insights into Rockstar Games' vision for GTA 6. Among the widely shared footage is a mission featuring Lucia, the game's playable character, and a Latina protagonist attempting to rob Hank's Waffles, a diner. During this early test phase, the non-player characters lack distinct facial features and bear a dummy-like appearance, humorously dubbed in-game as such. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. The NPC's responses are influenced by Lucia's aggressive actions, with various animations depicting the fear evoked by the robbery, akin to the dynamic NPC reactions seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. In the diner heist, Lucia has the option to aim her handgun at a hostage, providing players the choice to either rob or engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Managing the hostage adds depth to criminal activities in the game. Jason, the white male protagonist, is also involved in the robbery, allowing players to interact with both characters during the encounter. Jason urges Lucia to act swiftly and escape without a trace, hinting at a relationship reminiscent of Bonnie and Clyde, aligning with previous leaks regarding the game's storyline. The character's appearance bears similarities to actors Eva Mendes and Ryan Gosling from The Place Beyond the Pines, though it remains uncertain if the narrative will mirror the movie's plot. Lucia and Jason appear to be in their late twenties, and the game incorporates a character-switching mechanism seamlessly activated through the controller's D-pad. As the police arrive, Lucia can menace another hostage, leading to a showdown with law enforcement outside. The intricate design of the outdoor area suggests a setting modeled after northern Florida, characterized by lush vegetation. As Lucia and Jason make their getaway, they rack up two wanted stars but avoid a shootout, deftly maneuvering around parked cars before commandeering a police cruiser. This early mission stage is apparent with tutorial-like cues, one highlighting improvements in police AI, where law enforcement remembers vehicles linked to illegal actions. The scene wraps up with Lucia driving the police car, Jason reassuring her of their ability to shake off the cops. However, their escape comes to an abrupt halt, with an unintended collision at an outdated car wash. The early footage reveals a minimap reminiscent of Grand Grand Theft Auto 5, with icons possibly denoting missions from unfamiliar characters labeled WM and YJ. As they ascend to the VIP second floor, Dre interacts with DJ Tip, who appears irked by drink delays. A brief spat implies Tip's unpopular status. Dre moves on, and the clip ends. It's important to note that these clips depict early development stages, subject to changes throughout the game's progress. Another intriguing leak spills details on over 500 in-game events, encounters, and Easter eggs. While we can't cover them all, here are a few highlights. Various events like fishing, Satanist houses, backyard wrestling rings, and big cat mansions offer diverse experiences within the game's universe. There's talk of missing tourists, yard sales offering new clothes, an event resembling insurance fraud from Saints Row, a mysterious voice in a storm drain, potentially a nod to Pennywise, a multi-location Bonnie and Clyde mystery, and a workout challenge hinting at the return of fitness activities. Additionally, within Grand Theft Auto 6, players can stumble upon an island camp, DUI tests, UFO sightings, an animal house, a swamp safari, and the prospect of crazy golf gameplay. Based on insights gathered from the GTA forums, GTA 6's open world is estimated to be at least two and a half times larger than GTA 5, 
Providing players with a vast and immersive environment to explore, the game draws inspiration from the successful approach seen in Red Dead Redemption 2, promising a meticulously crafted open world with captivating mysteries that elevate the gaming experience. GTA 6's development footage showcases recognizable real-life locations from Florida, such as the Homestead Miami Speedway, reimagined as the Port Gel Horn Racetrack, along with places like Portofino Tower, Sombrero Key Light, Solar Amphitheater Bayfront Park, and Lone Depot Park. Moreover, the inclusion of the 1000 Museum, a high-rise residential condominium in Miami, demonstrates Rockstar's dedication to detail. A metro map mirroring Miami's real version adds to the immersive nature of the game world. The presence of lush grasslands and vegetation hints at potential expansion into Georgia. Although this aspect remains speculative until officially confirmed, the Miami Beach Police Department's resemblance to the Vice City neighborhood police station shows how Rockstar brings creativity into their world designs. Of course, with any early info, we're waiting for official confirmations to see how these elements fit into the final game. Until then, the mystery around Grand Theft Auto 6 will definitely keep fans excited for its release. Now, let's take a look at the primary locations featured in GTA 6. Ambrosia comprises Ambrosia Farms and the Tarmac. Bayside Copperhead, the Everglades, or Grass Rivers, Fairyland, and Fairyland Forest offer distinct settings. The Keys region includes East Key, Low Key, and additional spots like a garage, gas station, and liquor store. Lake Okeechobee encompasses a motel, prison, and racetrack, while Little Haiti, North Beach, and North Miami feature establishments such as gas stations, hideouts, and liquor stores. Port Gellhorn distinguishes itself with detailed spots like an abandoned building, basketball court, beach, bingo hall, bowling alley, car wash, fishing store, fruit stand, gas station, station, motel, pawn shop, police station, quick shop, raceway, soccer field, and more. Red Hill showcases a forest, South Beach offers a boardwalk, gym, hotel, ocean drive, and park, while South Miami Sundown includes a beach and tarmac. Vice Beach encompasses Vice City suburbs and Washington Beach. Miscellaneous locations such as an abandoned hotel, observatory, fountain of youth, homeless community, Malibu Club, Monument of Leonida, Redneck Yacht Club, Spaceship House, Underwater Research Facility, and Dinosaur World enrich the gaming world. Recent leaks from this week strongly suggest that Alexandra Christina Ekavari might be the voice behind Lucia in Grand Theft Auto 6. Her voice in a demo reel closely matches the leaked clips of Lucia's dialogues, hinting at her likely portrayal of the character. Throughout this breakdown, we've covered loads of info about Grand Theft Auto 6, diving into different aspects of the game. It was important to cover everything we know about the game so far, and while we're eagerly waiting for it, it might still be a couple of years before we get our hands on it. Let's kick off by highlighting some cool discoveries from the leaked clips, focusing on new features and gameplay details revealed. In one scene, Jason and his pals are chilling by an in-ground pool in a modest neighborhood, cracking jokes about a parody of social media called Life Invader. Their banter brings in playful references to Jay Norris's demise showcasing that classic Grand Theft Auto humor fans love. Lucia and Jason are shown in animation tests doing different actions like jogging, stopping, and ducking to avoid gunfire. Rockstar's developers also tested vehicle crash physics on an overpass. The highway signs on Interstate 97 mention North Beaches and Lake Leonida, with the current exit leading to Washington Beach. In another interesting scene, Jason finds a shipping container filled with stacks of cash and a motorbike. Various development clips reveal tweaks being made to a vehicle's interior, hinting at potential new designs or customization options options for players. Throughout the clips, interactions with NPCs in the open world are demonstrated, including characters taking selfies, which adds depth to the game's environment and immersion. There's a moment where Jason enters a gang member's territory and takes cover behind a truck, showcasing unique animations for characters reacting to being shot. A notable find in the clips is a jetpack, previously leaked by Tom Henderson which is seen inside the Jack of Hearts Club. The game features parody social media logos like Snapchat, Instagram, and Life Invader. Characters also sport different hairstyles, with details like Lucia's visible bra under her shirt, adding realism. A new feature is the ability for players and NPCs to hold their guns sideways during combat, adding a different dimension to fights. Additionally, Jason is seen twirling his rifle in the air, while another character in a parking lot shoots at him with their pistol held sideways. The leaked clips also reveal early police AI testing, with NPCs showing better cover usage in shootouts. There's a scene where Jason holds up a diner worker with an assault rifle, and while there are dialogue options similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, they seem placeholder for now. 
Also, Jason's new ability to go prone is a fresh addition to the series. There's a scene in a thrift or antique shop that allows for robbery, potentially serving as a spot to sell stolen items, adding depth to the gameplay. Another feature borrowed from Red Dead Redemption 2 is the ability to pick up and carry bodies, which adds complexity to gameplay. Red Dead Redemption 2's influence can be seen in several other aspects of this game too. The game brings in several RPG elements, like managing food, drinks, sweat, fatigue, and even taming animals, giving players a deeper gameplay experience. References to mountain bike ramps and city bike rentals promise enjoyable cycling activities. The leaked clips mention a bunch of weapons, from firearms like pistols, shotguns, and rifles, to unusual ones like golf clubs, baseball bats, and crowbars. Players can also use equipment such as flashlights, binoculars, lockpicks, and more. Additionally, players can stay in motels and hotels, with the Kington Hotel being one of the options. There's even a pool party with live music for players to check out. References to the Everglades and wildlife like alligators, snakes, raccoons, and birds suggest diverse environments to explore. The weapon wheel system, similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, limits the number of weapons and items players can carry. Lucia can carry a loot bag, possibly used for robberies or stealing from different places. The inventory system allows players to carry health kits and other items for temporary boosts and Jason can pick up and drop weapons from his inventory. The clips hint at animations like Overdose, suggesting unique actions or events in the game. There are indications of horses and horse riding mechanics, possibly inspired by Red Dead Redemption 2. The open world is full of accessible places, including motels, metro stations, restaurants, pawn shops, and supermarkets. Little details like grabbing a gumball from a quick shop machine add to the overall vibe. A cool feature is the ability to shoot while swimming, adding a new layer to combat situations. All these diverse and interesting elements together promise an immersive and fun gaming experience in Grand Theft Auto 6. Let's dive into the cars of GTA 6. Shout out to the GTA forums for putting together this info. You can find links below to join the discussions. There's a bunch of confirmed vehicles. We're talking the Blista Compact, Ocelot Locust, and a car that looks like an early 90s Buick Skylark. Then there are some new cars without official names, like a 90s Chevy Caprice, a Chevy Malibu from 2016 onwards, a Chevy Sonic, and a Honda Accord from 2018 to 2022. And you know how Rockstar rolls, they'll give these cars their own funny names like they always do. There's more on the list too. Albany Primo, Benefactor Shafter LWB, a mix of Ford Explorer and Tahoe from the 90s or 2000s, a Toyota RAV4 from 2018 onwards, with a mix of Lexus NX style, and a Mercedes Grill, Pegasi Tauros, a 1980s Jeep CJA Scrambler, a 5th Gen F150, a G20 conversion van, a Brute Camper, Vapid Speedo, HV Mixer, Metro Mover, D-Class Sheriff SUV, Mobatsu Sanchez livery, Nagasaki Street Blazer, a 1970s Ford Ranchero, a 1971 Buick Estate, an Albany Emperor, D-Class Turbo Saber, Yoga Classic, The Contender, and Saddler. Moreover, gamers can anticipate a range of vehicles in Grand Theft Auto 6, including the Slam Van Pickup, Bobcat XL, an updated Regina, Alpha, Gauntlet Classic, Moonbeam Helion, Boxville Go Postal, an unidentified Albany vehicle drawing inspiration from a 1959-60 Cadillac, a Rebel, an unknown Asian sedan, a Ferrazzi or Ferrochi, Baller, Novak, Buffalo STX, Alpha and Fudo, a Benson NF890, Buffalo without a sports bumper, and the Steenier and Landstalker. This extensive lineup promises an immersive and varied driving experience for players within the game. What's got you hyped about this game? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Today's video will delve into the upcoming changes to the AI systems in Grand Theft Auto 6 by Rockstar. We'll explore a patent that introduces a groundbreaking system unprecedented in gaming, promising a revolutionary shift in how AI operates within games. Additionally, we'll delve into other intricacies concerning AI and non-playable characters in GTA 6, including insights from a job listing at Rockstar's new LA studio, shedding light on NPC dialogue. We'll also examine NPC behaviors in response to their environment and their integration with social media, enhancing immersion and complexity in player interactions. Let's kick off with Rockstar's innovative AI system set to debut in Grand Theft Auto 6. Described by Rockstar as the most significant and immersive evolution of the series, the emphasis on immersion is evident in their patent filings. We'll focus on one particularly intriguing patent, unveiling a new system poised to revolutionize AI in gaming. Considering Rockstar's commitment to delivering the most immersive experience yet, it's evident that NPCs and AI will play pivotal roles. This patent specifically pertains to animations in GTA 6, aptly named System and Method for Virtual Character Locomotion. Back in 2020, Rockstar Games unveiled an innovative system that will debut in GTA 6, 
Now the details might sound a bit complex, but essentially, this patent outlines a fresh approach to animating characters and imbuing them with dynamic intelligence. These characters will now possess a kind of virtual brain, allowing them to react to their environment, other NPCs, weather, and even their mood, influencing their animations on the fly. Before this advancement, each character's animation had to be painstakingly recorded in a studio equipped with motion capture technology. This process involved attaching markers to actors' suits and compiling animations into what's called an animation tree. This method was resource-intensive, limiting the variety of animations Rockstar could include in their games. For instance, in GTA V and Red Dead Redemption 2, each NPC had its own animation tree, containing all their actions. Animation trees essentially stack animations, blending them together seamlessly and transitioning between them based based on player input and in-game conditions. Additionally, motion matching, a feature seen in GTA 5 and RDR 2, automatically selects animations based on player actions and the surrounding environment. This results in fluid and lifelike character movements, such as running while shooting, creating a more immersive experience for players. With GTA 6, Rockstar introduces an innovative system designed to optimize resources and streamline animation data. This approach allows for more content within the game while offering a broader array of animations. It shares similarities with motion matching but diverges in its utilization of a new framework. Rather than relying on conventional animation trees, character animations will be predominantly data-driven, adapting dynamically to environmental cues. These animations will be categorized into distinct motion types, representing unique character styles. Each character will possess a designated motion type, enhancing the depth and realism of their movements. As an illustration, let's consider various states such as tired, injured, and normal, each corresponding to a set of animations. Additionally, every character will possess their own blackboard, a virtual representation of their current state and surroundings. This blackboard stores crucial data including the character's condition, location, weather, temperature, and more. Utilizing this information, the game's code dynamically selects appropriate animations or styles for the character, enhancing their responsiveness to the virtual world. For instance, in the Ocean Drive scene from the trailer, we observe a character seated on the sidewalk. As a group of NPCs pass by, he attentively observes them, reacting accordingly to their presence. With this system, the gameplay experience is poised to become even more immersive. It will prioritize environmental data, including the presence of other NPCs and vehicles, alongside factors influencing the character's mood. Consequently, NPCs will exhibit previously unseen levels of reactivity, shifting focus to a noteworthy job listing from Rockstar's recruitment opportunities. Last year, Rockstar opened a new studio in Los Angeles, from what we know, it's purely a new motion capture studio, so they have another one besides the one in New York, mainly to record NPC dialogue probably. This discovery confirms that. I checked Rockstar's careers page just now, and there's a job offer at Rockstar LA for associate writer, pedestrian, and ambient dialogue. This could indicate that they are still writing and recording GTA 6 NPC dialogue right now. This suggests that the development team is currently engaged in scripting and recording NPC dialogue for GTA 6. You can find the specific responsibilities outlined in the job description provided. It says, write funny, character-driven, and unique dialogue for our ambient population. Work with key stakeholders to understand and support the technical requirements for player-led, dialogue-based interactions with our ambient population. Provide exciting dialogue that works within the strict constraints of a complex game system. Undertake self-motivated research and leverage that research to enrich your writing. Understand and match the tone of our games. This underscores the commitment of Rockstar to ensuring that GTA 6 remains true to its franchise roots. Aligning NPC dialogue with the established GTA universe bodes well for the game's authenticity. Shifting gears to another aspect related to NPCs, let's delve into how they'll integrate with social media. Not only will NPCs exhibit more lifelike behaviors and interactions with their surroundings, but they'll also engage with social media platforms, a novel addition to Grand Theft Auto 6. Here's a rundown of the phones observed. NPCs will be equipped with various phone models, as evident from both images and the trailer. Notably, NPCs will actively engage with their phones, which boast fully functional cameras and displays, an improvement over GTA V. For instance, in a scene from the trailer set on Ocean Drive, an NPC can be observed capturing photos or videos with their phone. The displayed imagery accurately reflects the NPC's point of view, suggesting the possibility for NPCs to record and share in-game content on the virtual social media platforms. Let's delve into an intriguing Reddit post that delves into this aspect further. Here's why NPC-recorded TikToks aren't as far-fetched as you think. A common speculation point I see on this subreddit is the potential for NPC-recorded TikToks 
for the game's social media that was teased in the trailer. Like someone filming you, commit a crime, and you later seeing that post online. Many have dismissed this as far-fetched in terms of development complexity, but I wanted to discuss why it's plausible. Firstly, I think we've already seen a system that could serve as a base for building a TikTok-like system, the Instant Replay, Rockstar Editor from GTA 5. Given this game is more of a sandbox with physics rather than a competitive shooter, where replay systems are typically seen, it's even more impressive to consider this system in GTA 5. It accurately records and replays events just as they happened, with every car, ragdoll, etc. Moving just as it did originally in the moment. The tech behind this isn't actually recording like a camera and replaying, it's really just recreating it, which again makes it impressive how much time Rockstar put into it, making it accurate. To me, this feels like what could be used as a base for a system where NPCs record their own videos from their perspective. This next thing is something I could have sworn I remember hearing long ago, but can't seem to find, and was hoping someone on here remembers too. Back before GTA 5's launch, there were details revealed through various interviews, magazines, etc., and I remember hearing or reading something about being able to watch your own crimes on Weasel News on the TV. This obviously didn't end up in the game, but there is a slight remnant of it in GTA Online. Am I the only one who remembers this being mentioned for single player though? Maybe my mind is playing tricks on me. Anyways, this last point is actually from the trailer. At the 033 mark, in this scene we see a lot of NPCs hanging out on a busy street, and one NPC in particular recording on his phone. As we know Rockstar's trailers are always all in engine, no CGI cinematics, so I think it's worth noting that it looks as if his screen is accurately showing what he's looking at. My screenshot is zoomed in, but if you got hat mark on the trailer, you can see it matches up to what he's looking up at. Could this be a hint towards said system, or just a nice detail? Rockstar has a reputation for delivering what they showcase in their trailers, often exceeding expectations. Their dedication to enhancing NPC interactions in GTA 6 underscores their commitment to creating a vibrant and authentic game world. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on these developments. Feel free to share your opinions in the comments below. In today's video, we're delving into the character creation aspect of Grand Theft Auto 6 and exploring how in-game NPCs will be generated. We'll take a look at a recent patent filed by T2 Interactive, the parent company of Rockstar Games, which sheds light on the character creation process within the world of GTA 6. The patent reveals details about a new system developed by Rockstar Games, designed to streamline character creation and leverage the capabilities of current generation consoles more effectively. As game worlds grow in size and complexity, filling them with diverse and compelling characters and environments becomes increasingly challenging. Artists are tasked with creating every individual in-game object, from characters to buildings and interiors. As these worlds expand, the computational and design efforts required also increase. However, Rockstar Games has once again demonstrated innovation by developing a system that optimizes the rendering of 3D objects, ensuring efficiency without compromising on detail. This system addresses the challenges posed by the ever-expanding scope of game worlds. The patent we're examining in this video is titled System and Method for Game Object and Environment Generation. This video takes a deep dive into the generation of building interiors and characters within the expansive world being crafted by Rockstar Games. The patent starts off by providing an overview of how objects function within 3D spaces, as explained by Rockstar. Objects used in 3D graphics, often called assets, are a combination of geometry data, for example, the 3D model, and data for textures associated with the geometry data. An asset may be formed of one object, or it may be a composite object made from a combination of objects. The objects that form a composite object may in different contexts be used as independent assets unrelated to the composite object, or they may always be used as a subset of a larger object. They've provided an intro to how 3D objects function in games, aiming to help us grasp the workings of their latest invention. Persons of skill in the art will recognize that many different sorts of assets, such as vehicles, can be made from collections of subcomponents. For example, one aspect of the game might require a room, say a dining room. That entire dining room could be considered one game asset, but it will likely be created from several other assets, such as a table, chairs, dishes, glasses, wallpaper, flooring, etc. The glasses and chairs are independent of the larger dining room asset. As another example, a virtual person in the game, such a background character in a scene, would also be an asset. A person asset might be made up of a number of interchangeable objects, such as legs, a torso, arms, a head, etc. Because the person is made up of interchangeable objects, a variety of different persona sets can be made by mixing and matching different constituent parts. 
But a body part like a torso might always be used as a subpart of a larger body object. Prior art systems generally include libraries of game assets. The systems and methods of the present disclosure add a metadata layer to these game asset systems and provide modified development and game architectures to take advantage of the new metadata layer. This metadata layer includes tags that are added to the object in order to provide useful descriptors. In a preferred embodiment, these descriptors are completely freeform and without context. This allows developers to specify information about objects as needed without having to be locked into a ridge pre-configured schema. Rockstar's new system introduces an additional metadata layer and utilizes tags for enhanced functionality. In the next section, they provide examples illustrating how this tagging system will operate. For instance, characters and virtual beings within the game world will be assigned tags like skinny, chubby, average, attractive, ugly, young, old, and so on. They explain that this tagging system won't just apply to the 3D models or textures alone, but to the entire object package, which includes the model and its associated textures. Essentially, every aspect of a particular character will be tagged. For example, skin textures for elderly characters will be tagged as old, while arms and torsos for heavier characters will be tagged as chubby. They also list other tag examples provided by Rockstar, such as sporty, hipster, emo, preppy, nerdy, luxury, basic, new, worn out, business, and formal. Moreover, each component can have its own tag, and there can even be collections of assets with tags. Furthermore, they explain that all these assets can be stored on servers for easy developer access via an application programming interface, API. Additionally, these assets can be stored in various formats like XML, limited text, binary encoding, relational databases, and others, depending on the developer's proficiency. The systems and methods of the present disclosure further advantageously use the metadata via a rule set layer that uses the metadata to increase the speed and efficiency of game rendering, world or scene creation, game script execution, and rendering fidelity. In particular, the rule set allows designers to add context to the tags and to control their use by setting rules for the asset usage and the asset's interaction with the game and other objects. These rules are unrestricted and can be used to provide a wide variety of different capabilities and restrictions for objects. Let's take a look at how these tags will be put into action. For instance, if a jacket object is created, a tag like additional top garment can be assigned to it. Then, during gameplay, certain rules might search for this specific tag to identify objects like jackets. Furthermore, in a cold setting, the character's health stat may decrease at a slower rate because the character stays warm with the additional top garment. Moreover, the additional top garment tag could enhance rendering efficiency. For instance, if a character wears a shirt underneath a jacket, the shirt occupies memory space. Since the shirt is mostly covered by the jacket, Rockstar plans to replace the full shirt with a smaller texture, only containing the visible parts under the jacket, thus conserving memory. The combination of tags and the rule set can also be used advantageously for procedural generation of game objects and environments. For example, a game scene could be created in a game script by calling assets based on tags, rather than calling the assets explicitly. For example, if the game scene called for virtual characters in a movie theater, the game designer could simply specify a need for predetermined X number of characters with casual dress. If the designer wanted a sci-fi movie playing at the theater, it might also call for a higher percentage than normal of characters tagged nerdy. The metadata rule set interface would interpret these general instructions at game runtime to randomly generate virtual characters fulfilling those needs. Additionally, this system offers increased efficiency. For instance, the entire character object doesn't need to be packaged before streaming to the GPU for processing. Instead, they can be generated directly on the GPU using existing model and texture assets. Of course, Rockstar aims to utilize as many preloaded GPU textures as possible while maintaining a realistic variety in the scene. Moreover, this system allows them to control the number of preloaded textures used in a scene. For instance, more textures can be preloaded for complex scenes and fewer for simpler ones. The goal of this video is to provide an overview of the key aspects of this new system, so I won't delve into every example described in the patent. Turning to the details of the specified metadata, in a particularly advantageous embodiment, the following metadata is included for each model and texture, IDs, property tags, match tags, randomization restrictions, expression data, and optimization data. While this selection of metadata has been found advantageous, 
Different groupings and subsets of these tags can be mixed and matched as needed to accomplish particular design goals without departing from the spirit and advantages of the present disclosed inventions. The uses, embodiments, and benefits of each of these fields are described as follows. These elements constitute the metadata, and while I won't delve into each one individually, they essentially represent the various tagging methods Rockstar employs to organize models and textures. These tags facilitate accurate and efficient filtering and sorting of assets within the virtual world. I trust this video provided you with an understanding of the tagging system Rockstar has devised. I'm personally excited about the potential for greater NPC variety in this vast world. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. In today's video, I'll be discussing the recent developments in the GTA 6 mapping project. We'll delve into the latest additions, including new locations featured in Trailer 1, adjustments to existing locations, refinements in certain areas, and exciting discoveries from the latest trailer, such as the yacht interior, surfboards, princess robot bubblegum, and more. Let's start by examining the mapping project itself. It's been some time since our last update on this front, and there have been notable changes to the map since then. This iteration represents the most recent version of the GTA 6 mapping project, spearheaded by Dupi's Zero R. Below, you'll find a roster of individuals who have contributed to this endeavor, and it's worth noting that this list has been recently updated. This project stands as the largest and most comprehensive effort within the fan community, with the goal of predicting the map of GTA 6 as accurately as possible prior to its official unveiling. DuPZ's Zero R mentioned that there's still an extensive list of elements to incorporate and modify, but for now, this update suffices. Anticipate further alterations to the map in subsequent updates. This iteration represents the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. Notable adjustments have been made to the legend and the manner in which various elements are annotated on the map. All markers now include viewing cones to indicate their general viewing direction. However, it's important to note that the angle of these cones is merely symbolic. Additionally, speculative location markers have been updated with red outlines to differentiate them from non-location markers. Furthermore, coordinate markers now display their corresponding clip names for easier identification. Changes have also been made to the naming conventions in the key section. For instance, you'll notice that the markers now include the names of the clips they are derived from. Let's delve into the alteration specific to Vice City. The angles of Rock Ridge and Stockyard have been tweaked to align with calculations slash evidence and to better match the coordinates. By observing the outlines, you can see that both the Rock Ridge and Stockyard areas have been subtly adjusted, ensuring a more cohesive layout. There's a noticeable improvement in alignment. A notable update to the map is this section here. Previously, absent features have been incorporated from the edges of one of Rock Ridge's mini-maps, and adjustments have been made to the water's edge in that vicinity now depicted in dark green to indicate the genuine boundaries of this section of the Vice River. Additionally, several buildings in the Rock Ridge area have been identified, including the Rock Ridge Community Research Center, Miami Police Department, Venture Apartments, Orange and Pink, 7071 Warren Thacker Manor, inspired by Martin Fine Villa, Palace Cafe and Diary, all sourced from leaks. Furthermore, there are two speculative markers outlined in red, representing locations from the trailer. One in Rock Ridge is speculated to be the Hammer Hamlet Ladies location, while the other marks the high roller scene from the trailer. You can find the timestamps for both scenes on the map. Updates have been made to the route of the I-404, incorporating new evidence. This includes adjustments in Vice Beach and the positioning of the road near Rock Ridge. Notably, there have been alterations to the highway section near the airport. Additionally, speculative terrain and building positions in Washington Beach have been revised to align more closely with the evidence. Changes have been made to the shapes and locations of the Ritz-Carlton Bal Harbor, Akoya Condos, and Jade Ocean Condos. Furthermore, alongside the speculative road and landmass in the Bayfront Heights area, the Y Vice City and Gate Slash Continental Hotels have been included in the Vice Beach vicinity. Additionally, several minor adjustments and fixes have been implemented. Regarding the Vice Beach area, there have been additions of new buildings supported by recent evidence. These include 200 Ocean Drive, 260 Ocean Drive, 1043 Washington Avenue, Beach Park Hotel, and Council Towers North. Moreover, over at Brickle Key Island, two new buildings, Brickle Key 1 and Brickle Key 2, have been introduced. Additionally, corrections have been made to the names of the Tequesta Point locations, accurately reflecting their respective positions. Now, let's shift our focus away from Vice City. Firstly, an error regarding St. Joseph has been rectified. 
Previously labeled in purple, it should have been marked in red to signify that this name hasn't been confirmed in the leaks, but is either speculative or based on real-life data. Moving westward towards Port Gellhorn, there have been notable additions to the leaked industrial area opposite the state prison, along with improvements to the prison itself. Several speculative structures, highlighted in red, including a water tower and industrial buildings, have been incorporated, along with a cell tower across from the prison. Heading south to the Keys, significant improvements have been made. Adjustments to the landmass near the camera location, where the shot with the Dodal seaplane occurs, have been made based on speculative evidence. An airbase slash runway has been added, along with guard booth and barriers visible in the trailer. Additionally, two speculative buildings marked in red, as well as the speculative naval area station, have been included. That wraps up all the updates to the GTA 6 mapping project. Share your thoughts in the comments below. There have been some significant changes with this update. But now, let's shift our attention to the discoveries made in the trailer. I also wanted to touch on these findings in this video. This marks the initial Reddit post. In the GTA 6 trailer, you can see through the yacht windows and see the interior even though it's very far away. However, in GTA 5, you can't at all see the interior even from close up. We will probably get inside the yacht and maybe even houses, or at least see inside it. In the shot of the Venetian island, it's evident that there will be a high density of yachts. It seems that the boats will be easily accessible, and based on the leaked shot featuring Jason on a boat from 2022, it's probable that players will have the freedom to enter, drive, and explore yachts like the catamaran seen in the opening scene of the trailer. Now, on to the next discovery, surfboards. Know a lot of people been talking about surfing, and while there's still nothing indicating it being an interactive mini-game surfboards, are in-game and seen in the trailer. Surfboards were in five, but only on the tops of certain cars, and a few static ones sat the beach. What do you all think? Will surfboards act as decorations like they were in five, or will it be a fully fledged minigame? Personally, I'm not fully convinced yet, but if NPCs do have actual schedules slash lives, I can't see things like surfboards just being static, especially at the beach. My guess is we'll see NPCs bring their own items to and from the beach, including surfboards, but the interactiveness is still in question. From the leaks, there hasn't been any information indicating that surfing will be an interactive activity in the game. Nonetheless, there have been numerous articles discussing this possibility, like the one mentioned here. Major GTA 6 leak allegedly hints at surfing to debut in series. The upcoming GTA 6, officially untitled, leaks are becoming more frequent and interesting, with a recent one revealing that the upcoming title will include new water sports, such as surfing. According to a report by the Dexerto Gaming website, a leaker named Alix Venturas revealed on Twitter that Rockstar Games plans to improve the water physics in Grand Theft Auto 6 and will introduce several water-based activities. While the gaming studio has not officially commented on the leak, players are convinced, given that Grand Theft Auto 6 will almost certainly feature Vice City, a fictional version of Miami, Florida, known for its beaches and water activities. However, it's important to note that these rumors haven't been confirmed by either the official leaks or the trailer. It remains to be seen whether these surfboards will merely serve as decorations. Now, on to the next and final discovery I'd like to highlight in this video, which might just be your favorite. Princess Robot Bubblegum is confirmed to be in GTA 6. Just like the Righteous Slaughter game series, Princess Robot Bubblegum is seen on a shirt and will most likely return with more episodes. The series originally appeared in The Ballad of Gay Tony and again with more episodes in GTA 5, making this the third appearance. When we talk about the positive aspects of this partnership, it's essential to highlight the potential benefits that can emerge from Rockstar's newfound support for the modding community. One of the significant upsides is the acknowledgement of the brilliant and skilled developers behind the modding scene. For years, these developers have worked tirelessly to create unique and engaging experiences within the GTA universe. With Rockstar stepping into a collaborative space with CFX, there's an opportunity for a more symbiotic relationship. The infusion of official support could mean more resources, tools, and encouragement for modders to continue pushing the boundaries of what's possible within the GTA ecosystem. This collaboration might lead to innovative gameplay features, improved server stability, and an overall better experience for both players and content creators. Moreover, the recognition from a gaming giant like Rockstar could open doors for these modders in the industry. It may pave the way for potential collaborations, official partnerships, or even job opportunities within the gaming development sphere. This, in turn, could elevate the modding community to a more prominent and respected position within the gaming landscape.
However, it's crucial to approach these potential benefits with cautious optimism. While the partnership appears promising on the surface, the reality lies in how Rockstar manages the delicate balance between maintaining control over its intellectual property and allowing creative freedom for the modding community. The outcome will heavily depend on Rockstar's willingness to foster collaboration, rather than imposing strict regulations. As GTA 6 draws closer, the impact of this collaboration will become more apparent. Whether it becomes a model for future partnerships between game developers and modders, or encounters challenges that hinder its success remains to be seen. The dynamics between Rockstar and the modding community could shape the future landscape of custom servers, roleplay experiences, and the overall modding scene in the gaming world. Stay tuned as we continue to explore and analyze the evolving relationship between Rockstar and the modding community. On the positive side, there's a glimmer of hope that Rockstar's acknowledgement of mods enhancing the player experience could pave the way for more modding support in GTA 6. This shift in perspective might lead to a more collaborative environment where modders can contribute to the game's richness without fear of stringent restrictions. With Rockstar officially and financially supporting 5M, the CFX team gains more resources to elevate the GTA 6 server. This could mean a server even more impressive than the ones they currently run. The fact that 5M is now a Rockstar Games product suggests a vested interest in its success, promising additional funding and manpower to ensure its flourishing. An intriguing prospect emerges concerning the accessibility of custom servers. Currently limited to PC players, there's speculation that GTA 6 might integrate dedicated servers within the game itself, eliminating the need for external programs like 5M. If this unfolds, it opens the door for console players to join the custom server experience, broadening the player base and community. Moreover, Rockstar seems to be attuned to fan desires. Despite a larger audience watching RP compared to those actively playing it, Rockstar appears committed to making improvements. Their intent to let custom servers thrive suggests a more fan-centric approach, acknowledging and catering to the desires of the gaming community. However, there are potential pitfalls to consider. The most glaring concern is Rockstar's inclination to monetize these servers. While the specifics remain uncertain, it's almost certain that some form of monetization, be it through custom server shark cards or a pay-to-play system, will be implemented. This could introduce a paywall, affecting the accessibility and enjoyment of custom servers for certain players. As we navigate through this evolving landscape of Rockstar's partnership with 5M, the delicate balance between fostering creativity and implementing monetization strategies will determine the ultimate impact on the gaming community. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel the complexities of this collaboration and its implications for GTA 6 and the modding community. Let's unpack this a bit more. The whole monetization story got its moment in the spotlight during an earnings report where Take-Two CEO Strauss Zelnick spilled the beans. He essentially said, if folks are messing around with our intellectual property, why not make a buck or two? It's a straightforward business move, really. Taking a page from the unprecedented success of GTA Online, it seems like Rockstar caught a glimpse of how these free servers could turn into a money-making machine. Now the potential downside of this situation lies in the realm of competition. Rockstar's got its A-team working on the custom servers gig. That means anyone outside the Rockstar circle trying to whip up something akin to 5M is practically painting a target on themselves for a cease and desist. Let's face it, Rockstar might have eyed this strategic move with 5M from the get-go. However, with those servers gaining crazy popularity and the game becoming a sensation on Twitch and YouTube, shutting it down wouldn't have been the smart play. Instead, they pulled off a masterstroke, acquiring the team behind the biggest servers, effectively cornering the market and positioning themselves to profit from any potential imitators. Now, with GTA 6 on the horizon and servers in the works, Rockstar's sitting pretty. Some in the gaming community are even giving them a nod for finally throwing a bone to the community. But, and there's always a but, at the end of the day, Rockstar's the one making the rules. We'll all have to toe the line because, quite frankly, there won't be any other alternatives in the neighborhood. So, buckle up for Rockstar's GTA roleplay. It's going to be a wild ride. The landscape has already witnessed the repercussions, with servers and mods being handed the shutdown ticket for not playing by Rockstar's latest rulebook. The new mandates include a strict no to real-life vehicles, mission mods, and porting old Rockstar maps or assets rules that weren't in the playbook just a couple of years back. Now, while the financial backing from a mega corporation might seem like a savvy move on the surface, there's a lingering skepticism about whether it'll blossom into the fairy tale ending we've all been envisioning. It's a bit premature to slap a final verdict on the fate of 5M once GTA 6 hits the stage. Now, let's consider the potential repercussions for the vibrant RP community. 
While the partnership between Rockstar and 5M could bring about positive changes, there's an underlying worry within the RP enthusiasts. The fear is that with increased control and potential monetization, the organic and immersive RP experiences that players have come to love might face disruptions. RP communities thrive on creativity, flexibility, and a sense of autonomy. If Rockstar's influence leads to more rigid guidelines, it could alter the dynamic of these communities, potentially affecting the unique narratives and interactions that make RP servers so engaging. As we contemplate the potential impact, it's essential to look beyond the immediate horizon of GTA 6. The dynamics established through this collaboration could set a precedent for future interactions between gaming giants and modding communities across various games. Whether it becomes a model to be emulated or a cautionary tale will be closely watched by both players and industry stakeholders. The future of 5M and the broader modding community remains uncertain as GTA 6 inches closer to release. While concerns exist, there's also room for hope. The collaboration might lead to a harmonious blend of official support and community-driven creativity, enhancing the gaming experience for everyone involved. As players, content creators and modders navigate this uncharted territory, the one constant is the love for the game and the shared hope for a positive evolution in the gaming landscape. Taking a stroll down memory lane, Rockstar's track record with monetization doesn't exactly calm the nerves. Add to that the current scenario where they're laying down the law for the CFX team, dictating what's permissible and what's not. This conjures up a cloud of uncertainty regarding the future of both 5M servers and the broader modding community. Personally, I'm a big fan of RP servers and that immersive content. It's my cup of tea. The idea that the same company that set the stage with GTA 5 might potentially tarnish 5M, turning it into a monetized maze with no alternatives, that's a bit of a buzzkill. Yet here we are in the waiting room until GTA 6 steps into the limelight. Hey there, great news for GTA fans. GTA 6 is making some big changes to the series. We've got a load of interesting info about the game that you should definitely hear about. Just a heads up, the details we've got are from leaked online footage, but sorry, no links or showing it. Still, loads of cool stuff to share, like new animals, AI changes, RPG elements, and more. Let's dive in. Fact 1 interactions with NPCs are getting way cooler. You'll have choices like threatening, robbing, shooting, or restraining them. Some missions will even have gesture-based actions, like Red Dead Redemption 2. Car damage is more realistic, and the insides are crazy detailed, with working dashboards. Fact 2. Let's talk weapons. GTA 6 is changing things up, taking a page from Red Dead Redemption 2. Instead of a big weapon wheel, you'll have slots for small firearms, melee weapons, rifles, and shotguns. No unlimited weapons, but you can drop and pick them up as you go. Fact 3. In the developmental phase, there was a sighting of Arthur Morgan's hat, though it's uncertain if this will make it to the final game. Players now have the option to surrender to the police during a robbery, which adds a thrilling twist. Police response time has been updated to feel more real, displaying a timer that varies based on the crime's severity. A murder, for instance, prompts a faster response than a robbery. The maximum wanted level is capped at 5 stars in GTA 6, and the possibility of a 6-star level seems improbable in the current gameplay being developed. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. Fact 4. Police AI has significantly improved from the last game. Instead of rushing in blindly, they now exhibit more realistic and intelligent behavior. If you commit a crime and flee in a vehicle, cops will note the specific vehicle and license plate, making evading them more challenging. Fact 5. Let's talk about the strong emphasis on indoor locations in GTA 6. There's a bunch of different interiors to explore, like nightclubs, motels, hotels, restaurants, pawn shops, supermarkets, fast food joints, gun stores, shooting ranges, and the Vice City Metro Station. Plus, they've added working elevators for a more immersive feel. Interestingly, there's a risk of players getting banned from stores, which adds a twist. Fact 6. Moving on to the characters. GTA 6 introduces two protagonists, Jason, played by Brian Zampella, and Lucia, portrayed by Alexandra C. Ekavari, who happens to be the franchise's first playable female character. You can switch between them instantly. They're also a couple, drawing inspiration from Bonnie and Clyde. Fact 7 clothing in the game behaves realistically. You can wear accessories like sunglasses, watches, wristbands, and hats in different ways. The detail is pretty cool, with sweat, dirt, and wrinkles adding to the realism. Fact 8. GTA 6, internally dubbed Project Americas, had a code name during development, like GTA 5, called Rush, and Red Dead Redemption 2, Bonnière. Originally, the plan was for a bigger map covering North and South America, but changes in Rockstar's approach scaled it down. Still, it's shaping up to be a memorable experience with its features and locations. Fact 9. GTA 6's map is officially bigger than GTA 5. This time, Vice City takes the spotlight, a Miami-inspired area with its surroundings, giving players a vast and diverse landscape. There's even a lake in one of the videos that hints 
at a significant part of Florida being in the game. Fact 10. Hold on to your seats. The jetpack's back. Shooting out of cars is on the cards too, adding more thrill. And get this, GTA 6 introduces 18 brand new vehicles to the franchise. Fact 11. In GTA 6, you'll bump into various events, like random mugger encounters and NPC-hosted yard sales. There are hints at riding events, which could mean horse riding, maybe even involving the Red Dead Redemption 2 team. Fact 12. New firepower alert. The spear gun's making its first appearance, letting players shoot underwater spears at their targets. Plus, there's a bunch of gear you can use, like binoculars, cutoff tools, flashlights, immobilizer bypasses, slim gyms, USB drives, tasers, zip ties, and auto dialers. Fact 13. The game has RPG stuff like weight and muscle management, seen in the Spool Couple Workout Challenge. Leaked footage showed Jason and Lucia's apartments. For example, Jason's place has a bathtub for in-game baths. Fact 14. Rockstar's planning to add new missions and cities regularly after GTA 6 launches. Whether this is for online or story mode isn't clarified yet. Expect an improved cover system, better than what we've seen in other Rockstar games. Fact 15. Make sure not to overlook the Kingston Hotel. It's a lively spot with pool parties and live music, making GTA 6 world even more vibrant. Fact 16. GTA 6 gets more interactive with working CCTV cameras that you can wreck. Be wary of cop traps, spots where cops wait to nab you, and be prepared for intense moments with dirty cop shakedown events. Fact 17. As part of the immersive feel, the game includes DUI sobriety tests, but it's unclear if they're for the player character or random NPCs. Rockstar's focus on detail shines, even with fully working gumball machines in the game. Fact 18. The gunplay in GTA 6 resembles what we've seen in Red Dead Redemption 2 and Max Payne 3. It might be worth giving those games a shot before GTA 6 comes out, if you haven't already. And activities? GTA 6 is loaded with options, from fishing and crazy golf to basketball, football and soccer. There are gyms to work out in, a yacht club, and even a racetrack. Fact 19. Get ready for a modern day setting. Post GTA 5 events. The game is meticulously detailed, recreating many Miami landmarks like a grand tennis court, a bustling football stadium, and a vibrant amphitheater. The map includes an airport and a functional tram system with an airport stop. And that's not all. The Florida Keys and a swampy region, the Grass Rivers reminiscent of the Everglades, are part of the game. Players can ride swamp boats in this area. Fact 20 weapons are diverse in GTA 6. You've got melee options like golf clubs, pool cues, crowbar, and bats, along with a range of firearms from pistols to snipers and RPGs. You can even customize how your character holds weapons. Plus, there's a bunch of throwable stuff like grenades, molotovs, and even golf balls. Fact 21. One major upgrade in GTA 6 is NPC behavior. NPCs will come in different sizes and shapes, and their reactions will feel super real. If you wave a gun around, folks nearby might freak out. The game's also getting an intense injury system, including concussions. Fact 22. Next up, the amazing visuals and new features. Your character will grow facial hair naturally over time. Plus, the GTA 6 world will have a social platform called WhatsApp, kind of like a fun version of WhatsApp. And good news for fans, spoof versions of social media like Life Invader, Facebook, Bleeder, Twitter, and Snapmatic, Instagram, are making a comeback. Fact 23. Now let's talk about our main characters, Jason and Lucia, each with their own and a shared inventory. Your inventory can carry various items like wine, soda, and fruit. Also, there's a duffel bag system for easy transportation of supplies and weapons. Fact 24. Rockstar's being more cautious in storytelling, steering clear of offensive jokes, and being considerate about groups that might feel targeted. The story goes through chapters, like Red Dead Redemption 2's approach. Fact 25 GTA 6 is loaded with side activities, from backyard wrestling and racing to UFO events and beach bonfires. Small stuff matters too, like picking up cans from the ground. Jason and Lucia, the main characters, have special abilities similar to those in GTA 5. Fact 26. Jason and Lucia's safe house is a motel, a hub for their activities. The game's world has various street gangs, each with its own vibe. Characters have different personalities like romantic, chaotic romantic, cool, pragmatic chaotic, and pragmatic cool. Fact 27 gameplay tweaks in GTA 6 include the ability to zip tie NPCs for stealth elements and the option to carry bodies, adding depth to stealth mechanics. Fact 28 robberies are a big deal in GTA 6, ranging from big heists to smaller scores. You've got easy scores like hitting bingo body shops, burnout skirts at Cafe Caraway, clothing stores, food trucks, massage parlors, and more. 
And now, there's even the chance to rob shipping containers, which adds a whole new level of excitement. Fact 29 gameplay is stepping up. For the first time in GTA, you can crouch and go prone, bringing in some tactical vibes. RPG elements are also in, with hints about hunger leveling and animal interactions, adding depth to the game. Fact 30. Excitingly, the Malibu Club and Ocean View Hotel are back in GTA 6. There are hints at events like Lost at Sea Island Camp and Lost Plane, suggesting possible island scenarios like Guarma from an earlier game. Fact 31. While exploring, you'll meet loads of wildlife, alligators, bears, boars, dogs, snakes, raccoons, birds, frogs, bald cats, and rodents. You'll also spot symbols for plants and toxic waste around the game. Fact 32. In the game, watch out for the Scarface crime scene, maybe a nod to Tony Montana as an Easter egg. There's also a murder mystery called Missing Tourists. Plus, spots for campers are scattered around, hinting at the chance of owning a camper van later. Remember, these details are from development footage, so they might change before the final release. Still, they give us a great peek into what Rockstar's cooking up for GTA 6. GTA 6 has been announced, and it's caused a whole bunch of rumors to swirl around. We've got a list of stuff that's actually confirmed for the game, so let's dive in. Now, the game isn't coming out anytime soon. Rockstar Games is still working hard on it. But thanks to some leaks, we've got some inside info on what to expect. We're talking vehicles, game physics, and the main characters, Lucia and Jason. Plus, we've got details on the map, the huge open world, activities, and all the weapons you can play with. There's also a bunch of cool stuff going on with NPC AI, RPG elements, and some new gameplay features. People are pretty hyped about all this, and they're chatting up a storm about what GTA 6 is going to be like. Now let's check out the vehicles in the game. The GTA forums did a solid job gathering this info, so shout out to them. So we've got confirmed vehicles like the Blista Compact, Ocelot Locust, and something that looks like a 90s Buick Skylark. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. There are a bunch of other cars too, without official names, like a 90s Chevy Caprice, a 2016, present Chevy Malibu, a Chevy Sonic, and a 2018 to 2022 Honda Accord. Rockstar usually gives these cars funny names. Other rides include the Albany Primo, Benefactor Shafter LWB, something that's like a mix of Ford Explorer and Tahoe from the 90s or 2000s, a 2018, present Toyota or RAV4, with Lexus NX vibes and a Mercedes grille, the Pegasi Tauros, a 1980s Jeep CJA Scrambler, a 5th Gen F150, a G20 conversion van, a Brute Camper, a Vapid Speedo, h Mixer, Metro Mover, D-Class Sheriff SUV, Mobatsu Sanchez Livery, Nagasaki Street Blazer, a 1970s Ford Ranchero, a 1971 Buick Estate, an Albany Emperor, D-Class Turbo Sabre, Yoga Classic, The Contender, and Saddler. And don't forget the Slam Van Pickup, Bobcat XL, an updated Regina, Alpha, Gauntlet Classic, Moonbeam Helion, Boxville Go Postal, an unknown Albany car that's based on a 1959-60 Cadillac, a Rebel, some Asian sedan, Ferrasi or Ferroci, Boller, Novak, Buffalo STX, Alpha and Fudo, a Benson, NF890, Buffalo with no sports bumper, and the Stanier and Landstalker. With all these vehicles, GTA 6 is going to be quite the ride. Now let's talk about some gameplay clips making the rounds on social media. They give us a sneak peek at missions and what Rockstar is up to. One clip shows Lucia, our main character, trying to rob a place called Hank's Waffles, a diner. In this early test, the non-player characters look kinda generic and are jokingly called dummies in the game. The NPCs react to Lucia's aggressive moves, and their animations show they're pretty freaked out, kind of like what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2. During the robbery, Lucia can aim her gun at a hostage, giving you the choice to rob or have a face-off. Taking a hostage adds some spice to the crime. Jason, the other protagonist, is there too, and you can interact with both characters during the heist. Jason pushes Lucia to hurry up and make a clean getaway, hinting at a Bonnie and Clyde-style partnership, which lines up with earlier leaks about the game's story. People are even saying that Lucia and Jason look like Eva Mendes and Ryan Gosling from the Place Beyond the Pines movie, but we're not sure if the game's story will follow a similar path. Lucia and Jason look like they're in their late 20s. You can switch between them in the game using the controller's D-pad. When the cops show up, Lucia can threaten another hostage, and it leads to a face-off with the police outside. 
outside. The outdoor area looks like it's inspired by northern Florida with all the greenery. While trying to escape, Lucia and Jason rack up two wanted stars. But instead of a shootout, they skillfully maneuver through parked cars and hijack a police cruiser. You can tell it's an early part of the game from the tutorial-like prompts, including one about the police getting smarter and remembering cars involved in crimes. The clip ends with Lucia driving off in the stolen police car, and Jason assures her they can shake the cops. But their getaway ends with an accidental crash at an old car wash. In the next mission, Jason and Lucia hit up a strip club called Jack of Hearts and run into Dre, who's chatting with another lady. Dre talks about his music dreams and hints at someone named Boopy. During this chat, we get messages from two new contacts, Billy and R.B. Shaw, through a WhatsApp parody. The early footage shows a minimap that looks like the one in GTA V, with icons that probably stand for missions from characters labeled WM and YJ. As they head up to the VIP second floor, Dre has a run-in with DJ Tip, who's upset about waiting for drinks. Dre steps in, but it's clear that Tip isn't the most popular guy. Dre moves on, and that's where the clip ends. Just remember, this is early development footage, and things might change as the game gets closer to release. Another leak spills the beans on more than 500 world events, encounters, and Easter eggs you'll come across while playing. There's too much to cover, but I'll mention a few interesting ones. You'll find stuff like missing tourists, yard sales with new clothes, an event that's a bit like the insurance fraud thing in Saints Row, a voice in the storm drain that might remind you of Pennywise, a Bonnie and Clyde mystery that spans different places, and a workout challenge that suggests fitness activities are back. Players can also stumble upon an island camp, DUI tests, UFO sightings, an animal house, a swamp safari, and even the possibility of playing some crazy golf. There's a hint that the basketball court might be back too. Events like fishing, Satanist houses, backyard wrestling rings, and mansions with big cats offer a bunch of different experiences in the game world. Now, let's talk about the main locations in Grand Theft Auto 6. Ambrosia has Ambrosia Farms and the Tarmac. Bayside Copperhead, the Everglades or Grass Rivers, Fairyland and Fairyland Forest offer different environments. The Keys region includes places like East Key, Low Key, and spots like a garage, gas station, and liquor store. Lake Okeechobee has a motel, prison, and racetrack, while Little Haiti, North Beach, and North Miami come with places like gas stations, hideouts, and liquor stores. Port Gellhorn offers a variety of spots to explore, like an abandoned building, basketball court, beach, bingo hall, bowling alley, car wash, fishing store, fruit stand, gas station, motel, pawn shop, police station, quick shop, raceway, soccer field, and trailer park. Red Hill has a forest, South Beach features a boardwalk, gym, hotel, ocean drive, and park. South Miami Sundown includes a beach and tarmac, and Vice Beach covers Vice City suburbs and Washington Beach. There are also other interesting places like an abandoned hotel, observatory, fountain of youth, homeless community, Malibu Club, Monument of Leonida, Redneck Yacht Club, Spaceship House, Underwater Research Facility, and Dinosaur World. According to info from the GTA forums, Grand Theft Auto 6's open world is estimated to be at least two and a half times the size of GTA 5 ES, giving players a massive world to explore. The game seems to take cues from the successful approach in Red Dead Redemption 2. Promising a well-designed open world with intriguing mysteries. We've spotted some real-life Florida locations in GTA 6's development footage, like the Homestead Miami Speedway turned into the Port Gell Horn racetrack, and recognizable places such as Portofino Tower, Sombrero Key Light, Solar Amphitheater Bayfront Park, and Lone Depot Park. Even the 1000 Museum, a high-rise condo in Miami, is in the game, showing Rockstar's attention to detail. A metro map that's a match for Miami's real one suggests a deep immersion in the game world. The lush landscapes and greenery might hint at a move into Georgia but that's just speculation until we get official word. Details like the Vice City Neighborhood Police Department resembling the Miami Beach Police Department show Rockstar's creativity and world design. As always, we're waiting for official announcements to see how all these elements come together in the final game. Until then, the mystery of Grand Theft Auto 6 keeps fans excited. There's a recent leak suggesting that Alexandra Cristina Ecavari could be the voice behind Lucia in Grand Theft Auto 6. Her voice from a demo reel seems to match up with Lucia's leaked dialogue. We've covered a ton of info about Grand Theft Auto 6, from gameplay details to new features. It's important to remember that the game might still be a couple of years away from release, so we'll have to be patient. Now, let's dig into some interesting findings from the leaked clips. We see Jason and his pals hanging out by an in-ground pool in a lower-income neighborhood, cracking jokes about a parody of social media called Life Invader. It's all about brain downloading and poking fun at Jay Norris's demise, classic Grand Theft Auto humor. The leaked clips also give us a peek into early police AI testing, showing NPCs using cover better during gunfights. 
In one scene, Jason robs a diner worker with an assault rifle, and we see some dialogue options that look like they're from Red Dead Redemption 2, but they might just be placeholders. Jason's new ability to go prone is a fresh addition to the franchise, and a scene in a thrift or antique shop hints at the option for robbery, maybe even a place to sell stolen items, which adds depth to the gameplay. There are animation tests for Lucia and Jason, doing stuff like jogging, stopping, and ducking to avoid gunfire. Rockstar's developers also tested vehicle crashing physics, with a car driving over an overpass. Highway signs mention North Beaches and Lake Leonida on Interstate 97, with the current exit leading to Washington Beach. In another scene, Jason stumbles upon a shipping container full of cash and a motorbike. Various development clips show changes to the inside of a vehicle, suggesting new vehicle designs or customization options for players. Throughout the clips, there are various interactions with NPCs in the open world, like characters taking selfies, which makes the game's world feel more immersive. Another mechanic borrowed from Red Dead Redemption 2 is the ability for characters to pick up and carry bodies, adding depth to the gameplay. We also see other influences from Red Dead Redemption 2 in different aspects of the game. The weapon wheel system is similar to Red Dead Redemption 2 with limited weapons and items you can carry. Lucia has a loot bag that might be used for robberies or stealing stuff from different places. The inventory system lets players hang on to health kits and other items for temporary buffs, and Jason can pick up and drop weapons from his inventory. In one scene, Jason enters a gang member's territory and takes cover behind a truck, and we see unique animations for characters reacting to getting shot. There's a mention of a jetpack that was previously leaked by Tom Henderson, and it's inside the Jack of Hearts Club. The game includes parody logos for social media like Snapchat, Instagram, and Life Invader. Characters have different hairstyles, and there are realistic details, like Lucia's bra showing under her shirt, which adds to the game's realism. A new feature is the ability for players and NPCs to hold their guns sideways, which changes things up in combat. We also see Jason doing some fancy rifle tricks in the air, and another character in a parking lot shoots at him while holding his pistol sideways. The clips mention animations like Overdose, which hints at unique actions or events in the game. There are hints of horses and horse riding mechanics, likely inspired by Red Dead Redemption 2. The open world is packed with places to explore, like motels, metro stations, restaurants, pawn shops, and supermarkets. Small details, like being able to get a gumball from a quick shop machine, add to the overall experience. The game adds RPG elements, like managing food, drinks, sweat, fatigue, and even taming animals, which gives players a deeper gameplay experience. There are references to mountain bike ramps and city bike rentals, promising fun cycling activities. The leaked clips talk about loads of weapons, from regular firearms like pistols, shotguns, and rifles, to unusual ones like golf clubs, baseball bats, and crowbars. Players can also use tools like flashlights, binoculars, and lockpicks. Players can stay in motels and hotels, with the Kington Hotel as one option. There's even a pool party with live music for players to attend. References to the Everglades and wildlife like alligators, snakes, raccoons, and birds hint at diverse and unique environments to explore. A cool addition is the ability to shoot while swimming, which adds a new twist to combat situations. With all these elements, Grand Theft Auto 6 promises to be an immersive and engaging gaming experience. In today's GTA 6 video, we're discussing how much money Rockstar Games has made from the first trailer released back in December. We'll also cover Rockstar's plans for the next trailer and their potential strategies for cross-promoting GTA 6. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get into Rockstar's promotion tactics for GTA 6 and when we might see a second trailer. First off, the timing of the next GTA 6 trailer is closely tied to GTA Online's upcoming update. Whether it's just a coincidence or a smart marketing move, this is a strategy Rockstar has used before. For example, they released GTA Online's Winter December DLC a week after the first GTA 6 trailer. This timing helped make it the most viewed GTA Online trailer ever, even beating out the reveal trailer for Red Dead Redemption 2. If Rockstar decides to use the same approach, we might get some new Grand Theft Auto 6 details next week. This could be a second trailer, some screenshots, or additional information about the game. The timing would line up perfectly with the next big GTA Online update, set to drop on Tuesday, June 25th. This is confirmed because the GTA Plus event period ends the day before. By releasing new GTA 6 content a week before the update, Rockstar could generate more interest in the upcoming DLC. If, for some reason, we don't get a new trailer or details from Rockstar, I think they might drop more hints in this summer's GTA Online update, just like they did last summer. You might remember a specific t-shirt from that update, which actually hinted at the exact trailer date and time. It had symbols from the Zancudo basement with a cryptic message that translated to, one day we'll reveal all. It does make you wonder if Rockstar will include some teases or cross-promotion in this update. 
Now that GTA 6 is officially announced, they might do something similar to a few years ago with GTA Online and Red Dead Redemption 2 where treasure hunts let you unlock weapons in GTA Online and receive them in Red Dead Redemption 2 when it launched. Speaking of GTA 6 trailers, here's an interesting fact. Rockstar Games has made a ton of money from the trailer on YouTube. We've talked about this in the last couple of videos, how it leaked because someone accessed a YouTube admin panel, but you can actually use public data and analytics to see how much money Rockstar has made from that trailer. It has almost 195 million views, closing in on 200 million, which is absolutely insane. Rockstar Games has made nearly $1 million from that trailer alone. The craziest part is that even though the trailer doesn't have ads, Rockstar Games still earns money from YouTube Premium users. While this isn't a huge portion of the population, it generates revenue based on watch time. From that alone, they've nearly made a million dollars. Imagine if they had actual ads on the video, they'd be making even more. But a million dollars just from premium users watching it is still pretty wild. In the grand scheme, it's a small amount for Rockstar and just a drop in the bucket compared to how much they'll make when GTA 6 actually releases. Still, it's an impressive stat for a trailer that Strauss Zelnick says has repeatedly broken the internet. All this excitement around GTA 6 is also boosting their parent company, Take-Two Interactive, with a substantial jump in stock price. According to Investing.com, an article published a few days ago states, the hotly anticipated release of the latest installment of Take-Two Interactive's mega-popular Grand Theft Auto franchise should fuel a substantial uptick in bookings and profitability at the video game maker, according to a JP Morgan analyst's note to clients. The analyst added that the gaming sector is increasingly focused on maximizing the success of proven titles, saying, consumer engagement and publisher resources have consolidated around the largest gaming franchises. They believe this trend favors the biggest players in the industry, with the biggest hits likely to get bigger and mid-tier games likely to struggle as competition costs increase. For this reason, investor expectations for GTA 6 are high, given the success of prior releases like GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2. Analysts anticipate that GTA 6 will drive a significant increase in bookings and profitability for Take-Two and potentially boost its valuation. They reiterated their overweight rating for Take-Two and raised their December 2024 price target from $180 to $200. All this is great news for the gaming industry. Confidence in Grand Theft. Auto 6 and Take-Two Interactive is growing, both among industry insiders and on Wall Street. It's just positive news all around. On another note, I initially thought GTA 6 would dominate the scene in 2025, causing other developers and publishers to steer clear. But that's not the case. Recently, at the Xbox Games Showcase, several amazing titles were announced. Some set for 2024 like Call of Duty Black Ops 6 and Assassin's Creed Shadows. Interestingly, many other titles are now slated for 2025, meaning they'll be directly competing with GTA 6. Let's go over some of those anticipated titles. We've got some major hits like Doom, The Dark Ages, Death Stranding 2, Monster Hunter Wilds, Little Nightmares 3, Fable, Judas, The New Switch 2, and its launch games, Expedition 33, Ghost of Tsushima 2, Civilization 7, Adam Falls, Spider-Man, Venom, and many more. And we haven't even seen Nintendo's lineup yet, which we'll find out at Nintendo Direct. There could also be surprise contenders like another Naughty Dog game. 2025 is shaping up to be an incredible year for gaming, possibly the best ever. And of course, GTA 6 will be a major highlight if Rockstar sticks to the full 2025 release date. I'm confident they will, especially after that internal delay. This way, they avoid a public delay, which would have happened if they initially aimed for early 2025 and then had to push it back. One thing I'd love to hear from Rockstar next is when we can pre-order the game and get a more specific release date. I'm really looking forward to when the marketing period kicks off. I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything we discussed today. Do you think we'll get new GTA 6 trailers, info, or details from Rockstar soon? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't been following the latest news on GTA 6 over the past year, you might be surprised by how much information has emerged. Here's a comprehensive update on everything we currently know about GTA 6. We have details about a wide array of items and tools featured in GTA 6. These include the auto dialer, binoculars, immobilizer bypass, cutoff tool, painkillers, pool cue, trauma kits, golf driver, food and drink, golf putter, USB drive, golf iron, crowbar, golf wedge, torch, jammer, duffel bag for looting, cigarettes, and a loot backpack. Let's discuss the game engine. 
Developers have made significant enhancements to the Euphoria physics engine, improving ragdoll physics and overall game mechanics compared to GTA 5. Now let's discuss the multiplayer aspect. In a leaked clip from GTA 6, we observed a multiplayer session with a player count. This suggests there were two players present in the lobby out of a maximum capacity of 32 slots. This mirrors the setup seen in Red Dead Online and GTA Online, where the capacity is stated as 32, but practically accommodates 30 players plus two spots reserved for spectators. While hopes for larger lobbies persist, it appears the testing phase involves 30 player lobbies. Leaks also suggest advanced weather systems, including heavy fog, a feature that was less common in GTA 5. Moving on to collectibles, there's mention of Wyman car parts. In a clip featuring Lucia, a developer is seen placing a cardboard box with a circular icon, indicating it as lootable. Debug text on this box identifies it as collectibles car parts and Wyman car parts boxed generic used, suggesting players can collect car parts possibly tied to a character named Wyman who shares a passion for classic cars with Jason. Regarding collectible hats, there's footage of Jason in an apartment where a developer interacts with a hat labeled as an ambient collectible hat. According to debug text, this hints at the inclusion of clothing items as ambient collectibles within the game. Additionally, a comprehensive list of all brands featured in the game is provided. While some brands may be integral to the story, many are included for realism and immersion. The list is displayed on screen for viewers to pause and inspect at their leisure. Similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, the weapon wheel in GTA 6 will be divided into three sections. Weapons, equipment, and gear. Notably, players can dual wield different weapons and access a quick item inventory displayed in the bottom left corner of the screen. While leaked recreations of the weapon wheels provide a glimpse, it's expected that the final version may evolve during the game's development. In a video snippet, an NPC is observed shooting at Jason, triggering a health tip to appear on the left side of the screen when Jason's health decreases. Additionally, the game will feature lighting and skybox systems, similar to those in Red Dead Redemption 2 promising improvements such as volumetric clouds and better lighting effects. Speaking of criminal activities, noteworthy events include the Hank's Waffles heist, where Jason and Lucia pull off a daring robbery. Other clips suggest Jason possesses an ability to perceive through walls. Additionally, there are events focused on searching vehicle trunks, which may yield valuable items or nothing at all. Lastly, delivery and pickup warehouse events are mentioned for Port Gelhorn, though specific details are still unclear. When it comes to accessible buildings, GTA 6 offers a wide range, including the Malibu Club, a pawn shop, Jack of Hearts Club, supermarkets, bars, restaurants, apartments, and laundromats, all enriching the immersive experience. Players will also have the ability to command the other character during a robbery. In leaked footage, a prompt advises players to either check in with Jason or hold for more options, indicating the potential to issue commands to your partner during a heist. This feature aims to streamline gameplay, enabling effective control of both characters simultaneously. Unlocking doors and gates is also demonstrated, as shown in a video featuring Jason in the San For San area. Debug text indicates locked door panels, suggesting the necessity to unlock specific entry points. In addition, a new police system called Time Until Cops Dispatch has been implemented. Now, when you commit a crime, the police won't immediately arrive. Instead, you'll have a brief window to evade capture before law enforcement begins to converge on your location. Security cameras play a role in surveillance, but their function differs from GTA Online. Instead of instant detection, there's a detection meter similar to games like Payday 2 or 3. As the meter fills up, you must break line of sight within a certain time frame to avoid detection. Players also have the ability to restrain NPCs using zip ties, as seen in leaked footage. This feature enhances the realism of robberies, offering greater control over the situation. Additionally, players can loot vehicles, as briefly shown in the Hank's Waffles video. A button prompt to examine SUV suggests the ability to inspect random vehicles and potentially steal valuables from them. A while back, a significant leak revealed a plethora of potential world encounters, random events that occur as you navigate the game world. I've displayed these on your screen, and while I won't go through each one, you'll notice they're quite fascinating. From parking disputes to donut burnouts, protests, and even someone getting a concussion, these events add depth and realism to the world of Vice City. It's exciting to imagine strolling through such a dynamic environment where something is always happening. Take a moment to review them if you like, they're quite impressive. 
Moving forward, the community has endeavored to construct a map of GTA 6 based on coordinates and locations gleaned from leaks. This preliminary map outlines Vice City situated at the bottom right. The top section of the map remains somewhat enigmatic for now. Nonetheless, this initial map looks incredibly promising, and the excitement for exploring its intricacies is palpable. For the setting, we know about three different gangs in Vice City. San For San, a Haitian gang, the Guardia Brothers, and the far-right militia. These details create an exciting anticipation for what to expect in GTA 6. Now, let's delve into the variety of confirmed wildlife in the game. Players can expect encounters with snakes, seagulls, skunks, raccoons, alligators, wading birds, squirrels, southern leopard frogs, crayfish, lizards, skunk apes, pigeons, opossums, and even whales. While these are the animals confirmed so far, we anticipate discovering more upon the game's release. These are the species we're aware of at present. Fences in GTA 6 are not just physical barriers to jump over or drive through. They are individuals involved in illegal transactions within the game. Acting as middlemen, these characters buy illegal items from players to resell them to others. Now, let's explore the AI witness system and police recognition feature, which are notably significant. In the Hank's Waffles robbery video, beneath the wanted level stars, there's a mention of full description, suggesting that witnesses can provide detailed information about you. This implies that once identified, the police will recognize you. When Lucia enters a police vehicle, there's initially no vehicle description, but this quickly changes to a full vehicle description. This indicates that law enforcement will possess detailed information about your vehicle. Moreover, the text warns that any vehicle seen entering will be noted by the authorities. This suggests that even after losing a wanted level, if spotted again in the same vehicle, the police will pursue and apprehend you. During the robbery scene, Jason attempts to prevent customers with yellow icons above their heads from calling the cops or fleeing. Additionally, a female NPC inside the diner exhibits similar behavior, with her icon flickering as Lucia leaves, turning red when surrounded by cops, and then fleeing upon spotting Lucia. These advanced NPC systems indicate a more sophisticated interaction model. Regarding item sharing, Jason and Lucia appear to be able to share items between them. For instance, in one clip, Jason steals items from containers, keeping some for himself while sharing others. Regarding sound design, it's no surprise that GTA 6 will feature more realistic soundscapes. Weapon sounds are crisper and more authentic, with increased volume for a more immersive experience. The impact of bodies hitting the floor will have a deeper thud, creating a more visceral effect. Police sirens will reverberate off buildings and environmental elements more realistically, while the sound of items will vary depending on the surroundings. For instance, if you're in a shipping container, sounds will echo more, adding depth to the auditory experience. Overall, these sound enhancements aim to emulate real-life scenarios more accurately, contributing to the game's realism. Moving on, we have an extensive list of every confirmed vehicle slated to appear in GTA 6, sourced from both the game files and leaks. I covered these in detail in a previous video, so I won't repeat them here. However, I've provided them on your screen for your reference. If you're interested in exploring the full list yourself, you can find them on page 30 of the document. The game features improved vehicle damage and handling, as seen in clips where crashes result in realistic effects, like splitting front fenders and bending car hoods. Furthermore, car interiors now include a functional GPS and waypoint system, enhancing immersion, especially in first-person driving. Players also have the option to enter a car from the passenger seat, adding a touch of realism to gameplay. These details highlight GTA 6's commitment to intricate design elements, evident in its meticulous attention to detail throughout the game. In addition, several new gameplay mechanics have been revealed. Players will now have the ability to walk while in cover, a long-awaited feature that introduces prone movement for the first time in GTA gameplay. Loot bags will allow for storing additional items, and players can now drop and pick up weapons. A new, under-fire animation has been introduced where characters cover their faces during combat, and players can opt to self-revive after sustaining heavy damage. Other significant mechanics include the ability to switch shoulders while aiming down sights, grappling during hand-to-hand -hand combat, and the introduction of buddy communications and a buddy ping system. This system, likely shared between protagonists Jason and Lucia, remains intriguing, with its full functionality yet to be revealed. Additionally, a new cover mode has been introduced, altering the way shooting from car windows is executed. 
characters will now fully lean out of windows, enabling full 360-degree shooting. Furthermore, a new ability system has been introduced, potentially exclusive to Jason, allowing for a form of wall perception. Whether Lucia will possess this ability remains uncertain. Players can also interact with a greater variety of objects and NPCs, engaging in actions such as carrying bodies, committing robberies, issuing threats, and conversing during criminal activities. Moreover, the ability to pick up additional items, such as beer bottles and cans, enhances the overall gameplay experience. Let's explore some of the exciting new gameplay systems. Firstly, there's the introduction of money laundering, hinted at during the Hank's Waffles robbery. An icon found near the car wash property featured a washing machine with a dollar sign, suggesting potential opportunities for money laundering. This implies that players may be able to purchase properties with the intent of laundering money, although specific details on mechanics remain undisclosed. Nevertheless, it appears players will once again have the option to acquire certain types of businesses for illicit activities. Additionally, there's a confirmed lineup of weapons, which includes a rocket launcher, assault rifle, baseball bat, polymer pistol, knife, bolt-action sniper rifle, Molotov cocktail, spear gun, which is intriguing, smoke grenade, compact SMG, flashbang, micro SMG, sniper rifle, heavy machine gun, auto rifle, and pump-action shotgun. Moreover, glimpses of Jason in various states, sporting different hair lengths and facial hairstyles, suggest a hair growth system akin to Red Dead Redemption 2. This feature seems highly likely given the game's lineage. In terms of sustenance, players can consume items directly from their inventory. In a scene at a gas station, Jason adds wine, soda, and fruit to his inventory, highlighting the ability to eat and drink on the go, akin to mechanics seen in Red Dead and GTA Online. In GTA 6, you can expect to encounter raccoons rummaging through trash cans and stealing food bags. This is evidenced in the game files, which document three world events. Raccoon climbing out of garbage, raccoon rummaging through trash, and raccoon stealing food. While there are numerous intricate details to explore, we've uncovered a multitude of confirmed locations spread across Vice City and its surrounding areas. Naturally, Vice City serves as the central hub, encompassing neighborhoods such as Edgewater, North by City, Rock Ridge, Little Haiti, Vice Beach, South Beach, Washington Beach, and Key Biscayne. Additionally, there's Port Gellhorn, which appears to be a distinct city akin to Sandy Shores or Polito Bay from previous games. Other notable spots include Yorktown, Ambrosia, Sundown, The Keys, La Pearl, Red Hill, Lake Leonida, Hamlet, Stockyard, Homestead, Grass Rivers, Iken Faka, various underwater locations, and more. Each of these locales is meticulously detailed, with numerous mini locations nestled within them. It's remarkable how much information we already have about the game's expansive geography. In GTA 6, if your character sustains injuries, health will regenerate slowly over time. To expedite recovery, you can access the weapon wheel and utilize a healing item. Unlike GTA 5, where health only regenerates up to 50% naturally and requires snacks for full recovery, GTA 6 appears to allow for natural regeneration to full health, albeit at a slower rate. While not officially confirmed, it's implied that using a medical item will accelerate this healing process. Regarding open world activities, there are seven confirmed activities thus far. Dice, golf, fishing, races, adventuring, shipments, and delivery van events. A video showcases a delivery van event near the industrial area of Port Gellhorn, featuring active security cameras that add complexity to potential heists. Two distinct event types mentioned in the events list are Pragmatic Cool and Chaotic Romantic. Introducing a new event type called Cop Trap, strategically placed in various locations across the map. The confirmed locations are displayed on your screen, indicating that law enforcement will deploy different tactics to apprehend you. Next, let's explore the array of new features spanning two full pages. Firstly, an enhanced AI system is showcased in a video where enemy AI targets Lucia once she turns around. These adversaries demonstrate improved decision-making, adapting their shooting tactics dynamically based on the situation. Notably, they adjust their positioning relative to nearby objects, aiming to avoid frustrating head-glitching tactics. Additionally, they display more tactical behaviors, such as lowering their profile during reloads and employing lateral strafing while firing. NPC behavior has also undergone enhancements, with AI groups no longer wandering individually, 
but moving in clusters, reminiscent of the dynamics seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. This is evident in a video where Lucia encounters a group of tourists engaged in conversation as they pass by. This enriches pedestrian interactions beyond the independent roaming seen in GTA V, now featuring diverse groups and even couples strolling together, enhancing the game's realism. A new gameplay feature allows players to surrender to the police during a robbery, introducing an intriguing dynamic with consequences yet to be fully revealed. Additionally, players can purchase gumballs from vending machines, potentially serving as a health boost, although specific effects remain speculative. Similar to GTA V, your character's attire will accumulate dirt over time, adding a layer of realism. Hacking will also be a significant element, with Lucia seen carrying various hacking tools, though it's unclear if Jason will have access to these tools as well. Previous leaks suggested Lucia's role as the designated hacker, but further details will emerge in due course. Expect an enhanced car hijacking system in GTA 6. For example, the inclusion of an immobilizer bypass suggests that stealing luxury cars will be more challenging. Additionally, a tool called a Slim Jim will be used to unlock older vehicles, adding complexity to car theft. Moreover, events such as Steel Car in Progress and Steel Car Fail indicate potential complications during vehicle theft. Events like Carjacking Dash Cat and Carjacking Dash Advanced AI suggest further intricacies in vehicle-related activities. Finally, the document concludes with approximately 20 pages detailing locations found in leaks that correspond to real-world locales in Miami. This inclusion underscores the meticulous efforts put into crafting a rich and immersive game world.